Two Good Sports with Tamo and Greggy. Hi there, welcome to Two Good Sports. Greggy, how's your week been? Uh, up and down, obviously. Uh, Thursday night was no good. Friday was uh, a little bit better. Enjoyed a good game watching the Bronx and Cowboys. Uh, well, result wasn't great for Cowboys supporters, but a good game just to watch one individual play like he did. The weekend, uh, local cricket side did really well in the seniors. The juniors didn't go as well, so uh, well done there. And our, uh, our executive producer's got a grand final next week. Yeah, well done, Keith. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I've had a pretty busy week. Uh, I saw a bloke riding a unicycle. <laughs> well done to him. <laughs> yeah. Rode a unicycle to work, this bloke. Uh, was in his uh, fluoros. Uh, well, of course. <laughs> why, why wouldn't he be? That's what I'd be wearing too if I was in a unicycle. Well, is that cheaper than a, 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 a normal bike? <laughs> uh, it'd be half price. I suppose it would. Yeah. Yeah. Who needs hammer butts? Yeah, but big week in sport, as you said. Uh, the cricket, the rugby league, the rugby union, the AFL kicked off. The AFLW moves into a grand final. And this weekend coming up, and the Australian Surf Life Savings Championship starts too on March 30th. Yeah, I think yeah, goes yeah. for about a week, week and so. So that's gigantic. So we're smack bang into sport after a, a few weeks. Um, a, a few weeks ago, it, it was a bit of a drought, wasn't it? Really? Yeah, it was just the cricketers getting beaten, but they've turned around, as we'll talk about later. Cool. All right, let's get into it. Just a reminder around the around the sporting world in 90 seconds is our chance to veer from from rugby league and cricket a little bit and have a look at some of the other things that have been going on. There's been lots, as we mentioned earlier, going on in the, around the world in Australia sporting-wise. Uh, Greggy, a massive week in rugby. Uh, the news that the Sun Wolves have been punted. What was the use of bringing the team in? Okay, you can look at it two ways. They brought a team in and then you punt them after two or three years. One way, did they ever get a chance? And then another way, did they see that the, it was inevitable? I don't know. Obviously, they saw it was inevitable. They've cut it. They cut the, the snake's head straight away and said, "That's mm. it." Right. Big, we'll go big, with a big it, reason. Crowds? Well, no. Um, well, South African didn't want them in there. So, mm. Simple as that. I guess one of the positives, I guess, from an Australian perspective, uh, a boil over and uh, the Waratahs beating the Crusaders. Yeah, well done, the board. Waratahs at the SCG. Um, I saw there's a bit of controversy even in the crowd where they want to put a few signs up about you know the, the, the disaster as as we know it now in Christchurch and the, the sponsors didn't like well the security guards didn't like it because it was covering some of the sponsors' sign. I'm sure all the sponsors wouldn't have minded for one week to mm. to at least pay tribute to the the, the, the happenings in Christchurch. So I really. You can't go up the sponsors. They never really had to say it was security guards, but I thought that was a bit harsh. Mm. And going to AFL now, obviously round one kicked off. Yeah. Before we go into the actual action, yep. uh, last week the, the AFL commission ratified the, the recommendation that the current time stay, the daytime grand final stay, at least for this year. They'll look at it again a little later on. I guess it all comes down to... To corporate sponsorship of corporate money, I guess. Yeah, it your, does. Your thoughts? I think uh, I think we talked about it a bit last week. It's inevitable to change, but for now it is what it is. So. Okay, let's go into the actual AFL. Uh, a lot of people looking forward to. Well, everyone was looking forward, I guess, to the kick off the AFL first round. Your match of the round. A lot of upsets. Geelong Collingwood was was the match of the round. It probably wasn't. Skillfully wise, it wasn't probably the greatest game of all times, but it was uh, very close and intense and two sides. It'll be definitely up there this year. So I'd go Geelong Collingwood. Mm. That's your round. And your Smokey this year? Oh, For the eight at least. Yeah. I, I'm, I'm, thank God you've asked me this week and not last week. Because <laughs> last week I would have probably said something like maybe Essen or Essen on a Smokey. But this week, like, you got to like the Lions and the way they played. You beat, you beat Western Australia, you beat the Eagles in over there. Great effort. I'm going Lions. Okay. Stay, staying on AFL. Uh, the AFLW. This is a real sport, yes. They, they, uh, their final next week. Carlton. Uh, Go Carlton. Uh, the Crows. I wasn't the... joking. It's Crow. God, the Crows are there. Who cares? Carlton versus the Crows. Carlton all the way. How good is that to see? And that's, uh, that's what it's about. But seriously, uh, they'll get a big crowd. 25, 30, maybe even more, thousand people there, and they deserve it. It's great to see, it's great to watch, and congratulations to both Adelaide and Carlton in making the AFLW final. 
you're always asking my opinion on things, obviously. Um, as the leader of the show, you, you, you have that right. I also have a right, and I'd like to know what you thought of this week. What was your big happening this week in the world of sport? I think it's been a great week, uh, but going away from the league and cricket, uh, I think it was it was sad to see, I guess, Nick Kyrgios playing up like a second-hand lawnmower again. Okay. Good on him for, you know, he's he's marching up the, the ranks. 27, I think, in the world now. So, mm. yeah. I think a couple of weeks ago he was 70 or 72 or something like that, about a month ago. So good on him there, but he, he does leave a, you know, he probably does leave a bad stamp behind him as he moves on. Yeah, he definitely does. But, as I, yeah, I think, I think he plays to it a lot. I think, obviously, he does have some anger ma- management issues. But I think, overall, I think he likes it. It gets him into the game. It gets the crowd into the game. I think he plays to it a fair bit. Another thing for me, and, and probably not, I don't mean to bring up two negatives, is Jared Mullen, former Knights halfback. Uh, he played a couple of games, at least one, I know, for, for New South Wales. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, had a drug overdose this week. Uh, he, look, I hope, as everyone does, that he gets his life back on track. But he's had a few ordinary years, I guess, to say the least. And uh, as rugby league's lifting itself up and getting... With, with concentrating on football, it's another thing you don't want to see. Yeah, I, I agree. Uh, 31, I think you pointed out, he's 31, I think about 19 or 20 years old. He made his debut for New South Wales. The next big thing, wasn't it? Uh, unfortunately, for, ever since then, he you know, had injuries and other things in his life. Uh, unfortunate incident, there'll be more to it, but you know, that's about all I think we'll talk about for it for now. Fair enough. That's our segment this week for uh, Around the Sporting World in 90 Seconds. As we've said before, if there's something that you'd like us to have a chat about you know, coming into our weekly show, let us know and uh, we'll certainly um, give it some yeah, think, yeah, we've if you've got a few feedback. We'll be talking about equality in sport between men and women next week on the show. So for a couple of people who have sent in some stuff about that, so we'll definitely talk about that next week. Greggy, a great round of NRL action, uh, round two. Uh, I felt a few clubs probably dusted off the cobwebs a bit. They didn't look that sharp in round one, and uh, maybe a few teams came back to earth a little bit you know, against some of the those teams that I just mentioned. Yeah, yeah, I totally agree. Cowboys came back to earth a bit. I, don't, I do think it shows that you outside the Roosters, um, as far as you know, they were missing Friend and uh, Cronk and still. Much, but they still put a score on there for for most of the game. They were, I think, mm-hmm. a twenty six nil or something like that pretty early on. But outside that, you only have to miss your top two or three players, um, and you're in all sorts of trouble. The new JT got injured early on in his game, and, and Morgan mm-hmm. looked injured the whole game. Mm-hmm. Cowboys went backwards two steps because of that. So, yeah. well, to start off, uh, I know you've been dying to talk about the first game of the round, uh, the, the Dragons South. Before we go into that, oh, you know, obviously we both watched a pretty. Uh, Pretty intently, I, I was sitting there with my with my wife. The kids were in bed, and I said, "Greg, he had a big smile on his face. They're home here." I've said this before in your presence with the with the dragons, and uh, I'm the kiss of death. Big, but I thought you just missed out on a try that would have been eighteen twelve. You did look the by far the better side. I thought if there was going to be a score in that game, you guys were going to put it on. Yep, sounds fantastic in theory. But unfortunately, in practice, it did not. In real life, it did not work. The Dragons' second half was deplorable. Mm. Oh, I don't like. I'm going to bag the coach here, probably. I will. Right. My biggest problem was at half time they're up twelve six. You should be motivated. And I suppose people say they're individuals, but also, how do you come out for the first seven minutes or ten minutes after the second half and fall apart like they did and allow tries up the middle like they did? To me, they weren't switched on hard in the second half. I, and I just don't understand how that happens. And maybe it's not Mary McGregor's. Maybe we're just tearing Mary apart. But it's somebody's problem. You know, the second half was dreadful from the Dragons, and there's no excuse for it. Their ruck defence, from a bloke who doesn't follow either side, in the second half particularly, was almost non-existent. It was, there was some... It was tag. They made some... Look, Cameron Murray had another... I'm a big fan of him, as you know. Had a great game. Yeah. Burgess keeps yeah. keeping no, on. But I think they made them look... Even better yeah, than what they were. The excuse, and I understand you're missing Mar- you're missing Mary. We might talk about him later, but you're missing Debellin, and you're also missing Frizzell. 
that is big up the middle. Don't, don't get me wrong, but just Lowry and, and a couple of the others, they're, they're potential superstars themselves. And you've got to stand up. I thought they just just lacked it. You know, just, just that there's something missing there. And I, the way Widdop acted after the game and he got interviewed and said he's of 5'8". I mean, it's good that he didn't toe the line. It's good because it's, it's good to see the truth. But it shows that there's something going on there when he's saying, I'm, I want to play 5'8". Well, he, he was, you know, he killed them, especially in about the first 14 games last year. Yep. 12, 14 games. Uh, he was the 5'8 of the yep. year. And he moved to 5'8 in the 60th minute. The minute he moved to 5'8, he did a kick and it was a horrible kick because he just spent the last 60 minutes playing fullback. So how do you adjust from fullback to 5'8 within two seconds? It's impossible. But there's an expectation that that's what happens and how it happens. It doesn't happen like Look, that. With a beside, five eight, you've got a couple of fantastic potential. Jay Field, uh, why you buy Corey Norman? Why in the world do you buy Corey Norman when you've got one more year of Widdop and you're basically saying that Jay Field's a five eight or a fullback? What are we just going to let Jay Field go? No, no, no. Jay Field is the one that should be playing five eight once Widdop leaves. But let's buy Corey Norman. Why not? That's bull crap. Anyway, move on. Last thing, your coach. Your coach of the the Dragons oh, yeah. tomorrow. Yep. Tell me three changes you'd make. Lomax is in. Hundred percent. Lomax is in. He's in your best seventeen. A lot of good coaches said you pick your best seventeen in your final spot. I think we've heard that from. And we might not feel good, but how many how many times did he coach the side in Premiership? Wayne Bennett, you pick your best seventeen. Lomax is in the Dragons' best seventeen. In guaranteed in. Witter plays five of eight. Hunt plays halfback. Dufty plays fullback. Corey Norman goes to the bench. I don't know. I, I'm no expert, but probably. Last thing, are you concerned about some of these guys who are not getting a run potentially? Yes. Yeah, Reese Robson. I, if he, he, he's a big chance. Canterbury put Leisha on the bench. Now I think the Canterbury uh, might have the Dragons hooker under twenty slash now second grade hooker might have him very very soon. Well, they're well and truly under the salary cap. And I think about if they get him, I will be ropeable because the bloke's going to be an absolute superstar if you ask me. That's enough torment. That's enough torment. Let's move one on. Night. Let's move on to the uh, the Friday night game, the first Friday night game. Uh, Raiders, Raiders were impressive last week against a pretty pretty lacklustre uh, Titans uh, in a in in a mud bath at uh, Skill Stadium on the Gold Coast. Here, uh, they came against a different animal this week. <laughs> they, they played against the Melbourne Storm, who yep. were again clinical. Uh, the Raiders, there was no, there was definitely you know there was a lot of uh, effort there. Um, but they came against a very committed side who did what they needed to do, and uh, 22-10 to the to the yeah. storm. I think it probably could have been. I was talking to one of their their biggest supporters today, one of the Raiders' biggest supporters, and he said it was you know he felt that that could have been 40 against him, so he was quite satisfied with that with yeah, that loss. Yeah, their best player, and he's worth 1.8 million dollars a year, is Craig Bellamy. Mm. Gosh, any club, if I was a club and you had some money, I'd, you'd get Craig Bellamy. He's a superstar of a coach, great coach. I know he's had the big three and all that, but he doesn't have them this year. He still mm-hmm. he still finds a way for them to be able to work. Well, he doesn't poach. Well, they don't poach, no. do they? They, de- they develop yeah. very good players into, you know, yeah. legends, I guess. They've had a lot of luck, too. Like, you yeah, the oh, they've three, luck, though. but you still got to make that luck work. Mm. Look, that game, I thought um, Dale Finucane had a great game again. He, if he was a Queenslander, I think he'd be in the 17 somewhere, but New South Wales is so top-heavy in the forwards yeah, in particular. Yeah, yeah. I don't think you'll make it there unless there are injuries, but I think he made 200 metres again or something like yeah, that. Yeah, no, good player. Played really well. I mm-hmm. agree. And Smith and Munster, they just controlled the game to their pace. And again, they just, uh, they're like boa constrictors. Melbourne, they just strangled Canberra out of the game and, yeah. and chalked another one up. Melbourne, the, make, Melbourne make people better players, and when they leave Melbourne, they never play as well. It's mm-hmm. And that's probably that uh, the influence of the coach as well, yeah. Bellamy. Uh, the other game on um, the main game, the, the local derby, Broncos and Cowboys. I was really excited to watch this. I thought at half time, or just before half time, ten, ten minutes before half time, we we're going to see another classic, another, another classic Broncos Cowboys game. There have been so many of them. Uh, you could see the twist turning. Obviously, uh, Tomalalo going off with that injury. That was huge. Oh. Someone said to me the other day, it's like going to watch Bradman and he gets out for a duck. You know, they're a bit disappointed. I don't know if you put it in that perspective, but big, big, he, big perspective. He he really he he. he the, if the Cowboys go well, it's generally in the back of him now. Oh, definitely. Three hundred metres the week before. Mm. 
Yeah, I, I heard an interesting comment from a few that Matt Scott was down, and, and oh, I agree. I think Matt Scott didn't probably play his better, one of his better games. Mm. Uh, but you got to give Broncos credit; they didn't allow that. No, they didn't. Have. I know you'll talk about Penguin Junior for about the next week if we allow you to. But uh, quickly, he's a Queenslander, isn't he? Yeah, yeah. Well, he was born somewhere near Queensland, so Cessna. Yeah, yeah. yeah. uh, but let's quickly talk about him. Let's talk about Penguin Junior. What do you think? And what do you compare him to as far as players? I think on his day, um, he, he's as good as anyone in the competition. Yep. I think he would probably say consistency his thing now. If he can if he can get a few of those together, he's had a, a fair few injuries. I think hamstring in particular. Yep. Uh, but if he could if he can do that three times out of every five, he's going to have a, yeah. a hell of a long career uh, for you know, New South Wales, Tonga, Australia, whatever. But he was destructive on the on. Friday night, he, he targeted big blokes, uh, and he he was the difference. I thought, especially that first half, um, he he just um, he was like a Gordon Tallis type sort of crazy, I guess, and but a bigger bloke. Yeah, let's hope he has a week off this week, though. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we'll see. But um, he he was a big difference, um, I think, for the for the uh, Broncos, and he's only going to get better. He's twenty two, I think. We forget he's twenty two. I'm sure Ricky Stewart would be ruling the fact that he that he let him go from from Canberra. Anyway, okay. moving on. The Saturday, uh, the Sharks hosted the Titans. Uh, it wasn't much of a game. Mm. It was. <laughs> it wasn't much of a game. I mean, it was twenty nil at half time. It was over, wasn't it? Yeah, it was. Mm. Uh, twenty points to six. I think we can move on to the next game without. It's probably the one thing we would say from a. We're not here just to say Queensland stuff because we said Penguin Jr. and how good he is and how good he is in New South Wales, but Jay Arrow had a blinder. He did. Um, but, 299 metres, I believe. Yeah. you think that bloke would have gave him the extra metre. Yeah, well, that's right. But Sean Johnson controlled it really well for mm. Cronulla. Uh, for feeders, uh, he's a great player. There's no doubt about it. He's mm. a great player. Mm. He does some stupid things, but he can play the game. For feeder and... As long as you've got Fafita, Johnson and, and Moylan when he's, he's got a slight injury at the moment, but those three... Are, Good side, mm. Cronulla, unfortunately. I think if you're a Titan supporter, I, I, the only Way it's positive, <laughs> but the, the positive, I guess, Greg, it was 20 nil at half time. Uh, yeah. It was 20 to six. They've scored one try now in two, in two games. Yeah, I, That's a it's probably a positive, but Cronulla, Cronulla have done their job. They've done what they had to. They did, yeah. All right, the other, the other, sat, well, the second Saturday game, the Knights and uh, the Panthers. We talked about a couple of teams dusting the cobwebs off. I thought Penrith. Well, one of those teams, they didn't play to their best. I thought, you know, their, their halves are now starting to regain yeah. a bit of control. They've got forwards coming back. They did what they needed to do. I'm still, this question for me at least is Ponga 5-8. I think sometimes he's maybe underutilised at 5-8. Yeah. Oh. I don't think it, the game didn't prove enough to me either way. Like what Graham Hughes said, let's see how these sides look after six weeks. Mm. It didn't prove enough either way. Look, okay. It was a messy second half, especially the last 20 minutes. 16-14, yeah. I think, was pretty indicative of probably uh, the game, I, I think. Okay, so we'll move on. All right. The other game on Saturday. Uh, Roosters and Manly. Manly. Manly against Roosters at Brookvale, or, or now the, uh, the Sandpit. Mm, mm. The Sandpit is more about the ground than anything else. The only other thing I heard about was Luke Cleary had an absolute blinder. He did. He did. I watched that game, and uh, he well, he's going to be the New South Wales five oh, eighth, I think, oh, in front of Maloney at, at this stage. He was well, sensational. I him play. Actually, he's, he's one of my favourite players at the moment. Luke Cleary just he controls the game so well, and I think he looks like somebody who enjoys it. Mm. And I know most of them do, but he looks like a kid in a lolly store. He just loves the game. He plays the game like he is a kid. As far as he just mm. he wants to be where the ball is, and he, he's great to watch play Luke Cleary. I really like. Him. And that's another one that New South Wales have poached off the Queenslanders oh, of course. on the New South Wales town of uh, Ipswich. So well done, Blues. Uh, Manly, a little bit like the Titans, I guess, came back. It was 26 nil, yeah. 26-18. Game over. But, yeah, too little, too late. We move on to Sunday. Uh, we mentioned last week this is a – this was the th – these were the teams of the 80s. Yeah. Canterbury and, and Parramatta. And for the first 15 minutes, it was all Canterbury, uh, I'm sure – Fitzy was jumping out oh. of his uh, out of his yes, seat. One of our loyal followers loves his loves his bulldogs. Well, 
a couple of other loyal, loyal followers. Slim. Uh, yeah, a couple of loyal followers who follow uh, right. Parramatta. Uh, yeah, we've got a lot of Parramatta supporters too. Um, Mitch Foss is another Canterbury supporter, but we've got a lot of uh, Parramatta supporters. I know a young Jackie player, he'd be a very ecstatic young man, and so would um, our friend the Wags. Mm, the Wags would be, would be going, doing somersaults. Well, apparently, they've already won the comp. Doggy told me that as well, another mate. They've already won the comp for Parramatta because they won two in a row. So, well, look, I keep on keeping on at the moment. It's only two rounds in the comp. Yeah, but the good thing is we talked good. about all of our mates. We didn't talk about the game because the game itself didn't need talking about. No, it was a pretty ordinary game, I guess. Yeah. But as a Parramatta, if you're a Parramatta, oh, a Parramatta sport, fan, look, you can't deny it. I shouldn't say that. They, they played. They played as good as they needed to, and they did a great job. And Ferguson, unbelievable. I want to talk about wingers later if I can. Look, Dean Pay. Um, Oh, they're surfing. A new coach, I guess. The, 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 the vultures are uh, surfing. You lose 40 to 6. You've got to come back the next week, especially early in the season. Then to get beaten 36 16. You've now had 76 points scored against you in two weeks. Look, you came out before the game. I saw him interviewed and he said, Look, we're, we're ready this week. And those words seemed like they were prophetic because they did go out and they, they led, led early and they led well. And it was like another team ran out and put the jerseys on and they, they just. You know, they, they were terrible after that. So they've got some work to do. Um, yeah. Reese Martin, who was one of their yeah. finds of last year, he's got to find his way in yeah, there. Yeah, he apparently played a really good 80 minutes of football in the lower grades. Uh, the Canterbury Cup, they call it. It's not named after Canterbury, but, you know, it's Canterbury Cup. Apparently he played really well for that, but he's even said he needs to be more consistent and more aggressive in defence. And we wrap the roundup with uh, the last Sunday game. Uh, the West Tigers uh, hosted the Warriors. We... We both picked the, the Tigers yeah, last week. Yeah. I, I thought it'd be a tight one uh, because the Warriors had a you know wonderful win last week. I think we've both mentioned the Warriors there somewhere around our eye. Yeah. And uh, we talked about, which, you asked me what I think, and I said, which Warriors team shows up? Well, it was the... That was a bad one. Yeah, it was that, that Warriors. And uh, for a while there, look, it was quite tight. But to the credit of the West Tigers, they're playing really expansive football. They look like they're enjoying their footy. Uh, the two old timers, uh, yeah, Marshall yeah. and um, and Farah, are having a ball, aren't they? Yeah, well, look, with Liam and uh, Oliver at home, two two my family, two young Tiger supporters. The uh, the Marshall dolls back out. He went in hiding, but they're they're, they're all Benji again. And um, I think one thing I said at the start of the year, I didn't know which Tigers are turning up this year. I thought they're either going to come last or they'll be a top eight because I just think it, it relies so much on Marshall and Farah. Mm. They're on fire. Six weeks I want to give them. I want to play that same six weeks with them. If they're still on fire in six weeks, they can afford an injury between that with Josh Reynolds as well. I, I, they, they could, and they're entertaining. Them. They're a chance for the eight. Well, well, in six weeks' time. I, I we, think they're, sorry, mate. You're right. I think they're more chance for the eight than Parramatta. That's my thoughts. In six weeks' time, we're talking origin then. I guess the yep. first origin will be wrapped, just about uh, rolling out. They're not going to be too affected by the origin either, which no. is a can be a real real bonus for them as well. Yeah. yeah. And Maguire gets a lot out of his team in the first couple of years. So I, I might even have a sneaky dollar or two on the Tigers to make the eight. All right. Now, Greggy, the poll from last week, uh, which we had uh, regarding two superstars, yep. was between which player would you like to have at your club? What a choice. Was, uh, Andrew Johns, Jonathan Thurston. Uh, I'd like to be greedy and, and have both in their yeah. prime at, at my club. Uh, it went Jonathan Thurston's way quite considerably. I was talking to uh, one of the followers today, Scott McLennan, and he, he told me, he said, I only went Johns because of his defence, which is a fair point. Yeah, it's a fair point. He did play a fair bit of hooker, but he had a beautiful tackling style. Yeah, uh, don't, Johns. Talk, yeah, don't talk to a New South Wales person about him playing hooker, Lee. Like, mm. I know a couple of my mates I say, oh, well, you know, Jonathan Thurston never had to play hooker for Queensland, but uh, Andrew Johns had to. Uh, but yeah, we had a bloke called Cameron Smith. Yeah, we did have a bloke called Cameron Smith. In saying that, yeah, they're both great players. Mm. Uh, I'm not big into comparing players when they're that good. Mm. You know, they're both great players. Absolutely. As you said, you loved having both in your side. Yeah. Shouldn't keep going about our allegiance. I think the Queensland allegiance comes through a bit. No, not yours, but both of our Queensland legends come through for Thurston in, in that fact. But I'm going to, for once, I have I try to stick my neck out, but for once I'm going to sit on the fence. Fair enough. Um, Jonathan Thurston. <laughs> look, I, um, 
immortals. One's an immortal and one will be an immortal. Tough choice. What are you, you going to say something then? Who do you want? Come on. I'll go first. <laughs> oh, look, you, 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 you line them up. Yeah. Both 10 out of 10 for goal kicking. Yep. Uh, their short kicking game is you know, exceptional, uh, as is their long kicking. They, the way they, they're Wally Lewis like thinking three plays ahead. Yeah. First one's acceleration, probably. You know, his ability to go through that line yep. was probably a little bit better than John's. And he's, well, John's a lot better t- defensive player. I give him that every day of the week. But Thurston's ability to accelerate mm. and know when I just thought it was just probably a little bit better than John's. But as I said, defence John's, though. Yep. All opinion. And uh, yep. thanks for those uh, all those votes. Great. All right, Greggy, let's have a look at round three uh, coming up. Uh Hopefully uh, the great games keep on coming on as they have been. We'll start with Thursday night. And this is why we dress like that this week. That's right. You can see me in this gear most days, obviously, but Tamo dusted off the cobwebs. He's not true. Sure so. Yes, he is. He's a big Bronco supporter. But this week, I think he's going to pick the Dragons. I'm just having a look at his tips here. Look, it's last time you guys made your way up to Suncorp Stadium, you really smacked our ass and... Um, that was that was the end of the Broncos finals campaign um, last and year. And Wayne Bennett. Mm. Uh, That's yeah, right. Yeah, 48-18, I think, was the final score, if I could correctly mm. remember. The it was when you rang me up about three times. Yeah, I think when Matt I Dufty think, yeah. scored and yeah, he didn't quite do any cartwheels or any bombs like Brian Fletcher, you know. Uh, they just sucked in, moved on, and got beat the next week by South Sydney. Thanks. Look, it's going to be an interesting if we took off, took away our allegiances. Yeah, yeah. There's a side, I guess, that's buoyant after a big week, yep. after a disappointing loss to Melbourne. They beat a pretty fair Cowboys side. You, you guys at the moment aren't where you want to be. You're, you're talking about earlier, you know, switching players and whatnot. This is a great platform for McGregor and the Dragons yeah. to come out and prove some people wrong. If and they're at the wood in the stuff here If there are anything, if they are anything, they'll get the sneaky little win at $3.10. Mm. You jumping um, on that? Oh, possibly, but it's just... This is his. This is where they've got to play for McGregor. He's copping a lot from everyone. Um, they've got to show something this week. And this comes back to the wingers. Wingers, I know Gordon Tellis used to say they just hang hang around footballers. But the big thing is this year, you have Corey Oates, you have Blake Ferguson, both Melbourne wingers. The, the big wingers are doing big plays this year, and they're... They, they take the ball back like second row. They're so big. They're like second rowers and they can jump like wingers can. But I just think the Dragons missed something this year by letting Nane McDonald go and, 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 and to a lesser extent Nottingale's retired, obviously. And their wingers aren't anything on, on what the Broncos have got at the moment. And, yeah. and that's the same. With, that's why I think the Eels are going so well. Someone like Blake Ferguson's having a blinder of a year for the Eels. Mm. He's huge for them. Yeah, the team, team like the Roosters probably don't rely on the wingers, but yeah, the other teams, if you've got good wingers, you're a chance. Tip. Dragons by four. Yourself? I'm going the Broncos. Uh, I think if they can back that up, if Pengai Jr. can have a you know three quarters of the game he had last week, I think. And I, I thought Nick Arima was strong for them last week. He, he led them around pretty well. So I'm going Brisbane. I think it's going to be a pretty close game. They're, they're traditional rivals. They've played a couple of grand finals against each other. I'm going Brisbane by about four to six. The uh, Friday night game, Greggy. Yep. We've got uh, Canberra, as we mentioned, probably a bit disappointed the way yeah. they, they, they played against Melbourne. And the Knights, the same. They they looked clunky in the second half yeah, against, against Penrith. So is this use. is a tough game to pick. Yeah. It is a tough game to pick. You know, Canberra at home. I... I I know somebody, one of you, you know, you, you spoke to somebody during the week that said they could have got beaten 40 to 10, Canberra. But I thought, I watched a fair bit of this game and I thought they hung on pretty well. Um, they, they're Englishmen, know how to tackle. Yeah, and they've got a great offload. I think they'll hang in long enough with Newcastle for them to get away with in the last 10 minutes. So I, I'm taking Canberra by six. Okay. I, 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 I think the Knights will prevail. I think it won't be much again. I, I think it'll be about two to four. Uh, the other the second game uh, on Friday is the, the round, probably the, the game of the round, I think. The, the Eels uh, hosting the Roosters. You've got, you've got the the contenders, I guess, against the champs. The champs, definitely, from last year. Contenders will, will know more, I suppose, after Friday night. Uh, 
they're 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 an improver, as I said before. I think the Tigers might be a little bit in front of the Eels as far as improvements concerned this year. Uh, I think they'll go well this week. I think they'll lose, but I think they'll go well. I, I reckon Roosters by about six. All right, I'm going to go an upset here. I'm, I'm taking the Eels. I think on the on, on the on the form of their halves at the moment, there's a lot of enthusiasm there. You mentioned Blake Ferguson yep. earlier. I'm going to go a bit of a bit of a smoky there. All right, let's have a look. Let's go to Saturday. Straight Hodges working well for you. <laughs> Saturday, this is a tough one to pick. Uh, uh, Desi Hasler's Manly uh, have not done what they need to do. Uh, I guess at the moment they're playing at um, Slippery Vale, Brookvale against the Warriors. They were disappointing against the West Tigers. Tough one to pick. Yeah, I like Manly in this game. The Warriors were dreadful. Dreadful against the Tigers. Manly, second half might have covered a few things. They might they might still be as bad as they were in the first round. But uh, I don't think they can lose a game at Brookvale. I think they should, they, they'll win this game. Oh, I think they might win by 8 to 10. Tommy Turbo's back. He's huge for them. That's the difference. He's yeah. huge for them. I, I like Manly. I like them. Ten, 8 to 10 points. I don't like them. I hate Manly, but I like them in this game. Eight to ten points. What about I'm, you? I'm taking the Warriors. Uh, I can't back Manly on their current form, I guess, at the moment. Uh, they would have been really disappointed with that last week, uh, Stephen Kearney's men. They they looked fantastic the week before against probably a disappointing Bulldogs, but I'm, I'm going the Warriors. Uh, let's have a look now uh, at the other Saturday game, or the second Saturday game, the Cowboys against the Sharks. Tough one again to pick. The Cowboys were brilliant the first week against your mob. Uh, Probably a bit disappointing last week against the Broncos with uh, Tamalala. The news coming out today, he's out for 10 weeks. That's a big loss for them. Uh, the Sharks did enough against a pretty disappointing uh, Gold Coast team. Yeah, we do these picks early in the week. Don't know what we're going to be seeing with Morgan or not on the weekend. If, if Morgan plays, I say Cowboys. If Morgan doesn't play, I reckon uh, Sharks. Mm. So I'm going to say that Morgan plays and Cowboys by two. Now yeah, I'm with you there. I think the Cowboys are a really tight one. I think some of the uh, the, the, the Cohen Hesses, the Gavin Coopers will probably have to pick it up a little bit. They've got some good young. Um, I, I liked that Mitch Dunn last week. I thought he did some good things on the bench. Really good. So I'm, I'm going the Cowboys in a really tight one. Maybe the conditions up there will suit the Cowboys a bit a, a bit more than the than the Sharks. Uh, the last Saturday game, the Panthers um, and the Storm. We talked about a couple of sides, you know, coming back in the form. The Panthers did that. In the scratchy game against Newcastle. I can't go against the Storm. I'm tipping the Storm again. Storm. Uh, we go to Sunday. We've got the Tigers and the Bulldogs. Well, we've got one extreme to the other, I guess. This week, the Tigers have just been a, a pleasure to watch this year, and you can't say that for the Bulldogs at the moment. In saying that. Uh, there's some, you know, they are rebuilding, I guess. Foran's back. Uh, you've got Lachlan Lewis has probably played about, you know, 15 Doesn't games. Yeah. Uh, look, they're, they're not the strongest team at the moment, the Bulldogs. I'm going to actually go a bit of a smoky here. I'm going to take the Bulldogs. They, I'm u- using your bounce back theory, Greg. I think Dean Pay has uh, got the vultures absolutely circling him at the moment. They would have been flogged throughout the week. I'm going to go and boil over here um, and take the Bulldogs probably by about two points. Staying with the Tigers. Yeah. If the Tigers lose this game, I think they'll regret it late in the year when they miss out on the finals by two points. If they win this, they make the finals. That sort of situation I think they'll be in near the end of the year. So they have to win these games that they're expected to win. I'll, I'll go to Tigers. I think it'll be close. Four to six. All right. Last game of the round. Look, it's hard to pick the Titans here, isn't it? Um, we mentioned earlier we've had a bit of a lunge. A bit of a yeah, we, we, we believed in the Titans. Yeah. Um, but they haven't um, they haven't lived up to that yet. But the Rabbitohs, who were exceptional last week, uh, again, um, they, they beat your Dragons last week, especially that second half performance. You guys maybe look, made them look a bit better than what they were, but they won quite convincingly. The Titans, they hung in, I guess, um, there were some willing forwards there. Joy Arrow was outstanding, as we mentioned earlier. I thought Jared Wallace you know, tried uh, tried hard. Uh, Ryan James, look, they've got a great forward pack, the Titans. When they click, 
they've had look to their uh, defence. They've had a few uh, injuries in the halves. In, in the you're missing your top two halves, you're missing Roberts and Taylor. I mean, yeah. until they're both back playing together, you can't pick the Titans. I think no, I, I can't pick them. I think Rabbitohs might go on with this and, and probably twelve plus for me. Yeah, about the same. Yeah, I'd say twelve. Yeah, twelve to sixteen. Agree really quickly. Our, our tips last week, we didn't set the world on fire, but in saying that, I, that was a big improvement for me from the week before. I got five last week, so yeah, the week before I was two, I think. I got four. Yeah. Last mark for me, and you obviously got five, so you just, just beat me. I think I might have taken Canterbury. Yeah. All right, we'll see how we go next week, Greggy, um, with the tips, but thanks for joining us for uh, League Our Way. I agree from the pavilion. Uh, been a big week of cricket. Uh, the Australian cricket team. They've found a magic pill at the moment. Yeah, yeah, they have. But they've won five in a row ever since we've uh, had this segment. So we can keep going for a couple more weeks. So probably in a couple more months, we might win the World Cup. Well, if we go to <laughs> September, we'll, we'll win the Ashes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's a big call. The Duke ball. I know that's going to keep being keep being brought up. If we can handle the Duke ball, we can win the Ashes. But uh, Back to reality right at the moment. They're playing really well. Uh, the top order, Finch and Kawaja again. What's that, 200s in a row for Finch? It is, yeah. yeah. And I think it's another 80-something for Kawaja last night. They're brilliant. So they're booked on the plane, those guys. Yeah, it's that famous plane. You're speaking of planes, uh, you're Ben Marsh. No, uh, maybe you eat your words there? No, he's not. My statement was, for those loyal listeners, that I said that, Marsh should not go on the ashes. He should be waving and waving hard at the plane as it leaves. From a one-day perspective, he's in my team. That's the end of my comment on, on, on uh, Sean Marsh, Miss Mar- Mitch Marsh. Marsh? <laughs> He'll be waving in both forms. What about Mrs. Marsh? <laughs> <laughs> she won't stop waving. <laughs> uh, look, going on last night's game, that's 2 0 as we mentioned. Uh, two hundreds in a row for Finch. Oh, yeah. uh, a couple of hundreds... A couple of games ago for Kawaja and 88 last night. Yeah. They, they won quite easily, I guess, the Australian side, I think, with uh, 13 balls left uh, and eight wickets. Yeah. We stuck with Finchy too, didn't we? Well, we didn't dump him completely. We said a test side, but mm. he's, he's proven uh, he's, he's, a, he's a world-class player. 153. He's got 153. He can play. Mm. Yeah, good player. Well done to both of those. I think that's his 13th one-day okay. national 100 now for Finch. So, yeah, he's um, and, and captain of the side. Thank you, Dexter. Uh, look, uh, they now, I guess Australia now have the, before we go into uh, Warner and, um, and Smith, Smith. Yeah. Jai Richardson was outstanding as well, two for 16 off five overs, six yeah, overs. Yeah, shoulder bump. Holy hell. I don't know how long that's going to mm-hmm. take, that mm-hmm. shoulder. Mm-hmm. If he's dislocated his shoulder, and they said, oh, he might be out for the rest of the Pakistan series, he'll be out for three months, mm-hmm. four months. He's got a, it's his bowling arm too. Mm-hmm. It's unfortunate. He, I think he's going to struggle. I think he, hopefully he's right just in time for the World Cup. It's June, so hopefully he's right for it because he deserves to be there. Real contenders now. Like if we had this conversation yeah. five weeks ago. Yeah, it's Australia definitely. are real contenders for the to win the World Cup. Some smart men have said that. Um, smarter than us have said that you know that it's a good position to be in when you go. Do you have to pick Warner mm-hmm. and Smith? Mm-hmm. At this stage, you don't have to. They're winning without them. But it's a great luxury, and they've got to go with them over to the World Cup. They have to go. But they have to be picked. Possibly not at the moment. Mm. In the 11, that is. Well, it's good. these are good headaches. Oh, they're fantastic headaches. Mm. Uh, fantastic. I think Hanson's going to be an unlucky one. And, and he's been pretty solid. Yeah. Just got a feeling he's going to be an unlucky one. Mm. Look, Greggy. This week marks the anniversary of the, the test match, the ball tampering in mm-hmm. Newlands. It's this week, it was the 24th of March uh, 2018. Uh, I think everyone remembers where they were when they woke up the next morning or and, and, well, if you're watching it live. Yeah. And uh, it, it was quite incredible uh, what happened. Uh, woke up with a gigantic hangover. We just won the local uh, third grade competition in uh, cricket. So I do remember it well, getting phone calls and... What's going on here? Mm-hmm. So, yeah, I remember it well. 
and, and I think you've mentioned before, it was probably, at least in the last 20 years, the biggest story in cricket, probably sport in Australia. Though, you know, there's been pep ties and all that sort of stuff, but it's probably been a national sport. It was probably the biggest story in a long, long time. I don't think it's the worst thing anyone's done. I no, mean, no. Uh, uh, Amir overstepping the mark for Pakistan when bowling in England by a good foot, half a foot, and then showing payment made to his captain uh, for that deliberate act against your country, really. And I know this was a deliberate act, but this wasn't for payment. Uh, I still rank that as worse than what the boys did, but that doesn't mean they didn't deserve 12 months. 12 months served, that's good enough for me. But yeah. oh, absolutely. I, I think there were people out there, uh, in just like us, Joe Public, and, and people in the media as well, who are coming out and saying that it was too lenient and they should be barred forever. No. I think you know, they've no. got, in my opinion, that they've, they've got they've a well heart. Yeah. Uh, we, you could see the, the genuine anguish on, on Smith's face yeah. and to a degree on, on Warner. They're, they've lost a lot of Warner or money. his publicist. Yeah. Well, yeah. Uh, yeah. But uh, regardless, they, they've served their time. They have. They've lost a lot, yeah. uh, in, including uh, sponsorship uh, and probably yeah. respect from the Australian public. Um, so they'll, they've got an opportunity now to move on. They're still reasonably young men. I think Warner turned 32 the other day. Smith would be about 28, 29. Yeah. During that time, Greg, they, they played a fair few comps whilst they were in exile. I think even David Warner even played in the Northern Territory. Yeah. Uh, played comp. Canada. Played in Canada, Bangladesh. Until Israel, no. Ireland, no. But they did, yeah. They played in Canada. They played all around the world. They played in, did they play in the um, Caribbean League? I think I think Warner they did. did. No, they yeah. both did. They both did. And they both had a few injuries here and there. Yeah. But regardless, you know, obviously their rep reputation's been, you know, probably in a way rep irreparably damaged. They're, they've got an opportunity now to come back. They're going to cop it in yeah. when they do go to England for the Ashes. I think they'll, they'll oh, they will definitely. Yeah. The English, if they can do one thing well, that is uh, find a little error in the person um, and they'll... They'll rip into Smith and Warner, hundred percent. They'll rip into them, and they've just got to cop it. If they don't, and they don't know what's going to head their way, they're, they're kidding themselves. They're going to cop it, wear it, hopefully score hundreds, shut them up. Generally, when something like this happens, something bad happens, a couple of good things generally arise. After a while, it's yeah. all doom and gloom. You've coached a lot of junior cricket, Greg, and um, I've probably done a little bit here and there. But I've seen in the past this uh, attitude creeping in where it was very confronting. It was this image that I guess the Australian men's cricket team uh, brought onto the field at times. Orange. And, exactly. And uh, it was good to see that Justin Langer came in and basically knocked that on the head. It, you know, it probably had to you know, crack a few eggs to make an omelette, but it's been done. And it, it looks a different Australian cricket team at the moment under the... Uh, captaincy of Tim Payne. Yeah, winning does that, but doesn't it, as far as, you know, both in test matches and one day cricket's concerned and they're winning. So winning form can cover the cracks. When they're losing, the cracks look ginormous, like a whacker sort of pitch. But now they don't look as big because of the fact is they're winning. And it's probably made it a little bit more seamless to get Smith and Warner into the scene because of that. So uh, it couldn't come at a better time their last five victories in the one-day cricket and their test match victories, and uh, it's going well. I think we can win the World Cup. You'd, you'd have to agree, wouldn't you? Oh, absolutely. Like, at the moment, like, they've done all the difficult jobs, I guess, playing in places where traditionally in for Australian cricket teams, it's been a nightmare. This is a great lead-up, but to be playing in countries that you are totally foreign to what's going to be in England. I suppose any cricket's good cricket, and you're finding out a bit about each player, but... It's totally different conditions in England. I think the good thing is, I think Australia are going to play Australia A over there. For, mm. They're playing quite a deal of matches. So Lang is probably going, okay, we're doing this, but for the next month or two, once we've got once we've got sort of the squad down pat, we're spending a long time in England leading up to the World Cup. He knows what he's doing. But they're winning. I think the biggest thing is they're winning. Yep. And and that winning winning breeds winning. Yep. That, that culture break, uh, you know, uh, refreshes itself. Lastly, Greg, the... David Warner's been told he's not going to have a role in Australian captaincy ever. Stephen Smith does have, a, have that opportunity. Tim Payne, I think, is 35 this year. Yeah. He's done a wonderful job. Do you see him in any capacity of leadership in the future? Tim Payne? Uh, Smith. Smith? An advisor? I wouldn't even make him vice-captain. I think 
Uh, I'm happy to have him back in the test team, but I just don't think Australia is probably willing enough to let him be captain again. Both of these players, just lastly, I think last I looked, Smith was averaging about 60. Warner is about 49 or 50, yeah, I think. Yeah, they're great players. They're arguably our two world-class yes, batsmen. Yep. Australia, when you take away you know, the initial damage that was done, they've rallied pretty well of late without those two guys. Um, yeah, I'm not sold on have been in the World Cup 11 yet. Not, not 100%. I think Warner is electric. Some people said my batting at six. I don't know yet. I don't know. I don't know where. I think if he plays, he's going to have an opener. Mm. And that means Finch or Collage is going to make room for him. I think eventually that will happen. I think if you'll find him open for the World Cup, and he's our best one day opening batsman, so fair enough there. Test match cricket. I sort of under nod there for the one, one, one day. It's test match cricket. They're both picked. Mm. You've got to pick Smith. That's one pick for one for test match cricket. And Warner's got to be. Just his acceleration. And the swinging ball might be interesting, but no, you've got to pick him. Well, they, a bit, <clears throat> well, they obviously they play second tier competitions. They've been in the nets. Yeah. They're, they're both fit. Very good cricketers. Yeah. They'll be a bit rusty coming into something like a World Cup. And oh, they will be. But playing the IPL, I think Warner got 85 or 87 just recently in, in the IPL. They're not, they're not mugs that are bowling to him, so it's a good effort. Uh, class is class. Lastly, on this on this topic, yep. 10 years' time, how are we going to look back on this? It'll still be an incident. It'll be like looking back, I suppose, for those who've been around long enough, looking back on South Africa. Uh, the Rebel Tours of the Australian cricket teams back in the 80s, it wasn't good at all. A uh, good look for Australian cricket. Uh, you look back on it and some of those blokes still don't talk together, you know, they're still... Mm. And I think I think you'll always find that these blokes, even 10, 15 years' time, that some of them won't necessarily be best of buddies as such. So mm. I think they'll be... They'll talk, but they're not going to be... Like, I still think Hazel and Stark have got something against Warner. So something more must happen. Will we ever find out? I don't really care anymore. Mm. But... I just think that overall, Australian, we're forgiving public when we're winning. Yeah, good point. All right, that's our topic from from the pavilion this week. Uh, and we, as we always say, we welcome your your views and uh, opinions on what we've covered. All right, well, thanks for joining us this week. Uh, week three, Hammer. I think we've done well. Absolutely, Greg. Yeah, and having a bit of fun too while we're doing it. Yes, that. yes. So we'll- Live here in the studio, and uh, where we are at the moment, it's approximately about 38 degrees. There's no fans on, no nothing. Humidity's about 200, 200, 200. So yeah, it's extremely warm. But uh, great week. Uh, thanks for viewing, and over to you, mate. Well, makeup's been working overtime. It has. Sponsored proudly by Forex Gold. Uh, again, thanks to to Keith behind the scenes, and thank you to you all there for for helping us out, supporting us, and. Uh, Have a great week. I know we will. And uh, may the ball bounce the ball go your way. Kick to the corner.